you, you grew up in a very hard childhood. You were adopted um, in and out of orphanages. When did, you, when did you leave Glasgow? And you went down to London, didn't you? I'd say I was sent in 19... I, was, I joined the Young Communist League when I was 17. And that's when I got educated. And I was sent down as a delegate to the Young Communist League conference uh, in London in 1957. 21? I, I was only 22. 22. Uh, no, I was less. I was 21. 21. When I, in 1950, I was working then in British Railways, and I got a transfer back to, uh, I got a transfer uh, d down to London. Um, I was recruited into the Communist Party because I, I was told I was too old for the YCL, you know. But I have to say of that, of the Communist Party of that time, and that's where I really got my education. But there were a lot of other influences during that period. There was a wonderful Dominican, Anthony Ross, a Highland-speaking Dominican, who I once told them, I said, the, the only thing you didn't give me, Tony, was bog Catholicism, because I said I was stuffed with bog Catholicism when I was a youngster. And at least uh, you gave me something about history and poetry and the history of Scotland. You, you mentioned poetry there. When did you begin to be interested in, in poetry? I was, it was late in life. I didn't know this existed in me. And I st it, for some reason, I started running poetry readings in 19, it must have been 1967. You, you, must be, you must have been reading poetry or... I was reading poetry. I was reading... I, w I tried to read everything I could. Um, and I w I, I, it was then that I, I, it, that I started... I didn't know whether I had a talent for it. Remember, my, I had such a bad education. I mean, I was totally... By 16, I was totally illiterate. I had to... And one of the most remarkable things that has really gave me when... The, the, the great writer Elizabeth Smart, when she s wrote to her son to say, I wrote the most loveliest letters, and a good encouragement, you know. She took me up, uh, she, she met me in 1965. I had met her son at Oxford. I got, again, I was lucky, I got to a workers' college in Oxford called the Catholic Workers' College, uh, it was something like Ruskin College. But I, uh, after a year, I dropped out, but I got something out of it. But it was it was a it, it was an amazing for a working class guy. I mean, I was always interested in books. I'd read everything of Dickens I could get my hands on. Um, and living in London, I, I keep meeting Dick characters, <laughs> although they're not Victorian as they were. You came down to London, uh, aged by twenty one, involved involved with the Communist Party, and ended up at Oxford within a few years. Uh, I'd, again, I, mean, I, I had friends in the Dominicans. The Dominicans were very, uh, what they call, very progressive order. They were uh, mostly uh, educated people. They were writers. One, well, Anthony himself was a, a historian. He was then, uh, he, was, he was permanently, he had been in London, and then he, he was moved back to, the, to, 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 to become the chaplain at Edinburgh University. Um, I, he's one of the people that I always say a great influence because he filled me with books um, uh, uh, and such like. So, uh, you, so you, you started then, to you, you were saying about starting the, the, the readings, for some reason you decided you I were going to run poetry was, readings? I, I started, I was, I certainly, for some reason I, I, I remember, uh, I thought I should do it. It was just an idea that cropped in my head and I decided a poetry reading. And I would invite, there were famous names in those days were George Barker, John Hee Stubbs, uh, even Derek Mahon was a young poet. I had him, Derek, and, and who else was that? Oh, there, there so many names are probably... What, what I even had them? John Hewitt at one time. When I, and as, as, moved, as the readings moved on, I, I met up with the, uh, he was a, a, a diplomat at the Irish Embassy, and I went to him and I said, I want to put some Irish poets on, and 
he suggest he said I'll get the rooms. A big Clare man. He said, oh, "Don't worry, I'll get the I'll get the money from Dublin if you can get the poets." And I met at that time a, a, a musician called David O'Docherty. He was also a painter. David said, "I'll do the music, Eddie. You get." And with some wonderful voices there, we had the late Jimmy Simmons, John Hewitt, Derek Mahan, um, a, a, a Dunny Gall Gaelic poet, a Madge Heron. Uh, it, and, and we, I used to fill, uh, they'd get some level, I would get about two or three hundred people in that, in, in that, uh, in, in, the, in the presidential rooms at the Irish club. So this is about 1967? This was, yeah, this was going into the 70s. Uh, by that time I had, in 1969, I launched the first Aquarius and I launched it in one of the best bookshops in, uh, it, you could get every kind of book. It was the, the, the compendium bookshop in Camden Town. And I saved up some like 60 pound. Nobody could believe it. I invited all these poets. And they were wondering where all the drink was coming from, you know. I was only 60. And it, mind you, it was cheap to get drink in those <laughs> days, you know. How did you save 60 pounds for? Were you, were you working still at that I was working at a day? library, that's right. I was working at a library. I was, in those days, by that time I had... Uh, moved on. I never kept jobs. I, 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 I was forever lost in that. I, I hated bosses. I hated being bossed. I, I always liked to be my own man. And um, I got a job at a library and I, all I wanted to do was to read to the kids. But I was told that I wasn't, that wasn't my job to read. Now, these were kids, children. And I used to love reading to these kids and they loved it. But this librarian said, you know, you're only a porter here. So, you know, your face has never moved. It still contains the marks of toil deep in blue. Those flag heaps now in green have flowers instead of dust. And many men are buried here whose shadows linger on.